Hi everyone, this is Dr. Dongfang Wang. Today we're going to continue our discussion on the MSH2 project. In the first part of the project, your goal is to determine the identity of the plasmid DNAs. In the lab, you will be given three E. coli strains with names such as AG17 or AG412, and your first experiment is to isolate the plasmid DNA from the E. coli cells. The first plasmid DNA is called PMSH2. This plasmid carries the MSH2 coding region for the wild-type gene. The second plasmid is called PMSH2 prime. This plasmid is very similar to PMSH2, except that there is a mutation in the coding region of gene MSH2. The third plasmid, PRS413, is the empty vector without any insert. To distinguish the plasmid DNA with insert from the plasmid DNA without insert, you can digest the plasmid DNA with APA1 and XPA1. The recognition sites for these two enzymes are indicated by two scissors. And the restriction sites are also present on the empty vector, but the two sites are very close to each other. After the digestion, both PMSH2 and PMSH2 prime will be caught into two large fragments. And the empty vector will be caught into two fragments as well, but one of the fragments is very small. You can perform an electrophoresis to determine the size of the resulting fragments. As you can see here, PMSH2 and PMSH2 prime have very similar digestion patterns, while the empty vector will produce a different pattern. And this small band here represents this fragment. After this experiment, we still cannot distinguish the PMSH2 from the PMSH2 prime plasmid. In order to achieve this goal, we need to use a restriction enzyme that's specific to the wild type or the mutant allele. In this experiment, we will first amplify a region of the MSH2 gene using PCR. The two purple arrows indicates the binding sites for the PCR primers. After the PCR, a fragment will be produced for the PMSH2 and the PMSH2 prime plasmid. The empty vector will not produce any PCR product because there is no primer binding site. You can use restriction enzyme to distinguish these two PCR products because the mutation will either abolish or create a new cutting site for a restriction enzyme. In this case, the enzyme cuts the original wild-type product twice, while one of the cutting sites is abolished by the presence of the mutation. Therefore, after digestion, three fragments are generated from this original product, while two fragments are generated from the mutant allele. This is how you distinguish the three plasmid DNAs from each other in the first part of the project. In the second part, we will introduce the plasmid DNAs into yeast and measure mutation rate.